Will the LOI exodus continue? What's going on guys? Welcome back to LOI Fan TV. I trust you are all keeping very, very well. Uh, this video will be the latest episode of the LOI transfer show. We might try and make it on a weekly basis as the window is open currently. Let me know if you want me to do that down in the comments below every Sunday evening, maybe every Monday evening, one of those kind of nights. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of content. We're going to be looking at uh, done deals, transfer rumors, whispers that you're seeing going around the place. Might be absolutely nothing to a lot of them. Obviously with transfer rumors, there's obviously a lot of kind of crap spread on Twitter and the likes but sometimes there is no smoke without fire I'm a big believer in that so sometimes uh, there is always a little bit of truth to the rumours and we will be investigating all the ones that I've heard in this video make sure to get down in the comments below let me know if you've heard any transfer rumours if I've missed out on any significant deals and we will discuss them in the next episode please do drop a like on the video if you go on to enjoy it and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here but yeah unfortunately starting off on a sour enough note obviously I mentioned at the start of the video there has been a little bit of an LOI exodus so far and this could be set to continue. We've seen the upsides recently of LOI clubs playing throughout the summer obviously Shamrock Rovers picking up a great win in the Champions League. It definitely gives us an edge in some of the European competitions being mid-season whereas for example the Maltese side are only yet starting their kind of pre-season so we're definitely having the upper hand there but then obviously the downside is losing significant players midway through the season is always a big big blow. Starting off with Danny Mandrew being a controversial figure in the League of Ireland the last couple of years just making that move from Bohemians to Shamrock Rovers but he had that fantastic fantastic spell uh, in Tala scoring 22 goals in 53 games earning a call up to the Ireland squad as well under Stephen Kenny so that's definitely something he'll look to do again only 23 24 years of age so still coming into that really good years of his career and getting into those kind of prime years as a midfielder but it's going to be a huge huge loss for Shamrock Rovers of course he has made his way to English League one side Lincoln City I've seen some mixed reaction to this online of course a lot of fans wishing him well he was a great servant to the club but a lot of fans wishing him well as well but questioning the move Shamrock Rovers kind of starting their Champions League campaign looks like they're going to be at least in the Europa Conference League group stage um, all things going well um, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of European football uh, played at Tala this, this summer let's just say that um, because they're it's a crazy crazy format I'll probably pop it on screen I think Owen Cowser did it really really well he kind of put the layout really really well it's confusing to read but it does look like they were in with a great chance of at least making the group stage of the Europa Conference League and a lot of fans of course questioning Danny Mandrew saying would you not rather stick around for this and, and, and play and win another championship uh, rather than moving across to League One kind of, I think they're mid-table last year Lincoln maybe even bottom half of League One Lincoln City last year obviously it's a huge opportunity to go back to England and he can probably fancy himself to become a force in their team and maybe push them towards a playoff spot and get into the championship next season and all power to him obviously it's probably a great move financially for him as well it's a short career sometimes you have to take these opportunities when they arrive at your door so I don't think anyone can begrudge him the move from that point of view um, I do get where fans are coming from but that is a personal relationship that they have with the club that are always going to favour that and they're always going to be thinking from their club that they support obviously you can have a biased point of view but sometimes it is a fair point where the player wants to go test himself abroad and kind of look after his, himself in his own career do you know what stings even more and I think this may have kind of played into the whole kind of fans maybe reacting a little bit poorly to his departure was that the transfer fee I believe was 30,000 euro a pitiful sum for a player of his ability but I do believe that he put that or his agent put that clause into his contract before he signed clever move he probably got a better kind of salary out of it as well because it was such a cheap transfer fee but for Rovers that's a sickening sickening blow I saw some Bose fans uh, laugh on at Shamrock Rovers for this 30,000 um, transfer fee obviously he's worth a lot more than that but uh, they obviously had to pay Bohemians 20,000 for him in compensation in the first place so I saw Rovers fans putting a spin on it saying oh you won us a league got, us, got the player of the year and then we made 50% profit on him as well so it's funny to see it from both points of view uh, and you just love that bit of Twitter beef or banter as well moving across to Richmond Park St. Patrick's Athletic have also lost a star forward in Dara Burns but big caveat here is that I believe they got a very very fair transfer fee for Dara Burns 180,000 is um, when you compare it to what Rovers got from Andrew it's an absolute great deal for Pats and um, obviously he's, he's, he's a potential to be a, a class class winger but 180,000 is, is not to be sniffed at um, as well as that obviously they've got, made some great business uh, Josh Keeley left for a significant transfer fee James Abankwa left for a significant transfer fee and then of course they uh, had a sell on clause with Luke McNally who made a £1.6 million pound move to Burnley as well where they got like 20% of that transfer fee as well I think it was like 300 grand or something like that they got from that so 
St. Pat's are absolutely rolling in at the moment and it's a great chance for them to reinvest that back into their youth facilities, back into their squad themselves and to really kick on now as well. So great chance for them to do that. But Dara Burns, of course, going to be a big loss. I think he had four goals and one assist this season. Had a great season last year as well. Um, it was a big, big part in Pat's winning the FAI Cup. So yeah, big loss for St. Pat's, but Dara Burns going over to MK Dons, a big, big opportunity for him. We saw how well the Irish got on at MK Dons last year. Troy Parrott and Coven Co Connor, excuse me, Connor Coventry ripping it up in League One. So hopefully Dara Burns will be able to replicate that. I'm sure he will and have a great career. But yeah, um, I'm sure St. Pat's will probably include a transfer sell-on clause in Dara Burns' contract as well. So we'll see if that can come to some sort of fruition and, and lead to a few bob down the road. Obviously that's two massive, massive losses for League of Ireland clubs. And it's a shame for League of Ireland as well to be losing these players just from a general point of view as well. You want to be seeing good players on display every week. But it looks like it could be set to continue. Bolton Wanderers are sniffing around Derry City Cap than Owen Toyle obviously Owen Toyle uh, obviously a super super player uh, captain of Derry at 23 years of age just shows his leadership abilities he's great on the ball he's quick and I think Bolton Wanderers have identified that they play with a three at the back um, and they let their wing backs bomb on I saw a little bits of them last season and they need to have players that they like to play off in the back on the ball as well so they need defenders in that back three who are comfortable on the ball quick and good, good in 1v1 situations and of course the Derry City man would make a fantastic acquisition for them it'd fit right in and he'd be a super super signing for Ian Evitt's side but there was something that I saw on Twitter about the them being in a huge huge financial position where it was and like uh, their accounts were released and they're in a really really bad financial position both and so i'm surprised if they can make any significant transfer fees uh for the dairy city band i'm sure they won't want to lose them on the cheap obviously they're in a decent financial position themselves and um, so I can't imagine him, obviously, I don't think he has the best contract situation going, but I can't imagine him wanting to lose him on the cheap, especially if they want to qualify for Europe again next season. He's a player that's on the verge of a Northern Ireland call-up as well. He's not far away from that at all. He's more than capable, and he's a class, class defender, more than capable of playing in the Championship. It'd be interesting to see how this one plays out, whether Derry try and entice him with a new big contract, or whether um, they do look to make a few of and let him go to Bolton Wanderers. It'd be interesting to see how it transpires. And of course, it looks like Dawson Devoy could be another one that could make his way to to League One Championship as well. Um, Keith Long has actually come out and said that he wouldn't be surprised to receive offers for Dawson Devoy with a number of clubs keeping tabs on the 20 year old League One side. MK Dons have revived their interest in Devoy and are expected to make an official offer for the midfielder soon. So another LOI player to accompany Dara Burns at MK Dons potentially, um, but I would be, wouldn't be surprised if there was a number of suitors after his signature. We all know how good Dawson Devoy is. We have a future star video on on Dawson Devoy and of course Dara Burns as well on the channel make sure to go check them out if you want to learn more about the two lads but yeah Dawson Devoy eight goals this season from centre midfield one assist having a fantastic year and yeah I'd be very very surprised if he's still playing for Bohemians come the end of the month Bohemians have brought in John O'Sullivan one of a number of players they've brought in so far and I'd expect them to continue with a couple of more signings uh, John O'Sullivan I'm not sure if he's like a like for like for Dawson Devoy I haven't really seen him play before but I know he has a plethora of experience he played over in England with likes of Blackburn Akron and Stanley made a lot of appearances he's 28 as well so a good age that gives us both sides a bit more experience a bit more leadership and it's desperately needed um, alongside the likes of your Jordan Flowers and stuff but it's a very very young side without too many leaders in that camp so it looks, I think John O'Sullivan could be one that, that is kind of in that mould definitely looks like an area that Keith Long has identified as somewhere they need to improve on Josh Kerr is another signing that Bohemians have made he's made his debut I believe he made his debut against UCD he was given the number 2 jersey um, so I, I'm not sure if he played it right back or uh, centre half against UCD Bose fans let me know has he been brought in to play at right back because I know there has been a lot of uh, like the likes of Max Murphy has got a lot of stick this season and um, playing at right back I know he hasn't played well but it's never nice to see a young kid getting loads of abuse online and stuff it's never nice uh, for a young lad of, of one of his own fans to be getting this much abuse and um, but uh, obviously he wasn't cutting it at right back and it looks like they have tried to move to identify that I'm not sure let me know Bose fans down below is Josh Kerr has he been brought in as a centre half or a right back because I know he's given number two and I know Kieran Kelly and Jordan Doherty played against the UCD um, and they were usually that centre half partnership and I'm not sure if that continued with Josh to the right or if Josh was in the centre as well let me know down below but it leads me to if Josh Kerr has been brought in as a centre back it is there is still an area there where Bohemians need to bring in a right back and a mad rumour is that they are looking to bring in Sean Gannon of course of Shamrock Rovers the experienced League of Ireland player one of the best full backs in League of Ireland history you could say but his trophy record is absolutely outrageous such a good um, 
solid right back for years and it's kind of in and out of the Shamrock Rovers side not really a starter for them really in their strongest 11 you're looking at Ronan Finn Andy Lyons Sean Cavanagh more probably preferred in the wing back roles and then he sometimes played in the back three and the right of the back three but Sean Horace definitely preferred there as well so would Sean Gannon make that move to the north side it is hard to kind of see it maybe from a wages point of view as well as everything else Dan McDonnell has said on Twitter that he doesn't see it happening obviously he'd be a reliable source for information so and um, he doesn't see it going through but you never know in the league of Ireland and maybe John Gannon has said he wants to play football he wants to uh, move on and obviously Bohemians looks like next season will be going towards a full time club maybe they'll be able to offer him that they'll be able to give him a competitive wage and they're going to bring him in in the next couple of years he'll be their right back and he'd be a fantastic signing don't get me wrong like he's still got so much to offer top class right back but I just don't see it happening to be honest and I think the reason that move uh, has come about as a rumour is because it does sound like Shamrock Rovers have identified Bohemians as Liam Burt as an option for someone they'd like to bring in and a swap deal has been rumoured to be on the cards there was some rumours that Stephen Bradley was looking at Liam Kerrigan Dara Burns um, and obviously with the departure of Danny Mandrew that's going to only intensify his search for a forward Jack Burns has been kind of quite injury prone since he's come back to the League of Ireland so there is definitely an area for improvement up front and the way I always see it with Rovers is you have kind of Graeme Burke, Jack Byrne, um, Dylan Watts. They're all players, Rory Gaffney, they kind of look look to come short and get the ball to their feet. They don't really have someone who's really, really quick who looks to get in behind and, and a ball in behind over the top. And that's definitely something that they're going to look like they're going to look to bring in. A proper wide man who'll stay out there, give them a bit of pace and look to get in behind rather than everyone coming short to get the ball. I think Graham Burke's probably the one option who does look to get in behind the most out of them. But you know, Jack Burns, even when Andrew was there, he'd come short to get the ball. It is something that maybe gives them that different option in their front three. I think Liam Burt would be a fantastic signing. People are saying, would he go from Bowes to Shamrock Rovers? You have to remember, looking at his Wikipedia, year he moved from Rangers to Celtic so he has history for this kind of stuff Liam Bird has four goals this season two assists and um, he has been quite I think he came into the season with an injury so he hasn't been fully fit and ready to go for the whole season and I think he offered the Shamrock Rovers side something different and he'd be a really really good asset for them in Europe as well someone who can get the ball and drive with it and get them up to the pitch in some tough nights I think he'd be a fantastic signing and definitely someone Shamrock Rovers should look at bringing in I was at the Tallah Stadium last week uh, as Shamrock Rovers are now comfortable winners over Hibernians but one of the kind of stories that kind of uh, came out of that game was of course about Justin Ferrajai I think that's how you pronounce it Ferrajai um, he looks like such a talented player 17 years of age uh, underage Ireland international looks like such a good talent I think his brother plays for Atletico Madrid how random is that 14 years of age plays for Atletico Madrid um, but yeah sounds like he'd be a class youngster as well coming through obviously with them but Justin in his own right a quality quality player by the looks of it quite a versatile attacking midfielder play out wide I think he could he could play through the centre looks like such a good talent but apparently Sampdoria came in for his signature and this could all be made up and, and nonsense talk but apparently he's going to turn down advances of a number of sides who are interested in Man City been rumoured Roma have been rumoured all these European giants have been rumoured with a signature but apparently this could be false but apparently he's set to sign a pro deal with Shamrock Rovers for two to three years and nail down a spot in the first team there and, and, and then go from there and if that is the case and he starts nailing down a spot in the first team for Shamrock Rovers and showing his potential he could be genuinely record League of Ireland transfer fee he's, you're, you're talking a million maybe in a year's time if he keeps up with the way he's going and he, he signed a three year pro deal you're looking at a lot of money for this kid especially with all the kind of sharks circling around them that's going to raise the price for them ultimately and we've seen 500 grand for James Abanqua, uh 500 grand for Gavin Bazunu so for Justin Ferrajoy for a player of his potential you're talking potentially a million plus Shamrock Rovers fans let me know down below do you think Justin Ferrajoy will sign a new deal with you and how happy would that make you feel and how much money do you think he could get from ultimately because ultimately he will be leaving the club you imagine in the coming years could he break the LOI transfer record fee for a sale let me know down below massive massive news coming out of Sligo Rovers a huge huge piece of business this is the, probably the most essential thing they could have got done screw your transfers this was the most important thing they needed to do nail down Aidan Keena and they have done that on a two and a half year contract um, obviously his contract was running out at the end of this season I believe and he signed until the end of the 2024 season a huge humongous piece of business it simply cannot be understated arguably 
the best striker in the league the definitely most informed striker in the league you, you could say um, 12 goals this season I believe for Aiden Keane playing in kind of an unsettled side that's not been at its best really as well for Slyke obviously a manager's been sacked things like that as well but he's been unbelievable and you could see his quality in Europe against Bala Town that little chip over the keeper outrageous goal and he will be crucial for Sligo Rovers in Europe this season and for the coming years and maintaining their place in Europe and potentially if they're looking to do it challenging for titles and finally Finn Harps um, obviously in a really really bad state at the moment they did obviously suffer a 3-1 loss to Shells last Friday night but they did bring in two players there were two surprise names on the team sheet and they announced the signing as the game was kicking off or as the game was kind of uh, leading up to the game and it is um Robert Jones the 26 year old striker from Scotland he played for Clyde previously never really heard of him before but hopefully they'll be hoping that he can kind of kick start their campaign and, and, and start to drag them away from UCD and into that playoff spot I don't think they're catching Drogheda or Shells or the likes at this stage but they need to keep an eye over their shoulder make sure UCD aren't catching them and, and resigning them to a 10th place finish they have brought in Liam McGing as well a defender from Australia he was previously with Sydney as well so they'll be hoping that he can kind of sure up what's been a shoddy defence for them so far this season so they, yeah they definitely need maybe a couple more signings if they can get them through the door but yeah worrying times for Finn Harps but they'll, Ollie Horgan will be hoping that these can really kick start their campaign well guys there you have it all the latest rumours and done deals etc around the Premier Division let me know down in the comments below if I've missed out on anything significant or if you've heard any rumours yourself let me down in the comments below for next week's show but during this week we will have a video coming up uh, one summer transfer that every Premier Division club needs so we're going to be highlighting a position a team needs and then maybe highlighting some potential options or a certain player that we feel fits that mould and let me down in the comments below if there's a player that you want your club to sign this summer let me know down below if you did enjoy the video please do drop a like on it and make sure to subscribe we really appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll catch you in a bit